Hello, welcome to the next lecture of this course. In this lecture, we will learn briefly about procedural programming blocks in System Verilog. I will not be explaining these concepts in detail because it's a big topic, but I will be explaining the bare minimal things which is needed to start programming in uh, test bench coding. So the question is, where shall I write your functional functional code in System Verilog? So uh, you know you have to write your code uh, in in a module, and you know where within a module where where should you write your code? Say if you have an if statement, where can you put that if statement within in your module code? You cannot directly put uh, your functional code within uh, a module. You have to use some 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 kind of programming block blocks available in System Verilog. So these are the programming blocks. Uh, which is either a continuous assignment blocks or a procedural assignment block and the continuous assignment block is called assign and remember that only a single statement can be uh, added into an assign statement it could be like assign a is equal to b or assign c is equal to d something like that but if you wanted to write multiple statements in a block that need to be in a procedural block and that block um, these are the procedural blocks available in, available in system will look to write your functional code. These are always, always underscore comp, always underscore latch and always underscore ff. And you can, for the time being, you can ignore all the, all these three, this underscore comp, underscore latch and underscore ff. These will be useful in case of RTL coding. As a verification engineer, you can just uh, focus on always alone. And the programming assignment blocks are always initial, final, task and function. In order to add multiple statements into these blocks, you need to use a begin end uh, with this keyword. So a, typically a programming always block will, will be uh, looking like always begin a um, number of statement followed by an end or in an initial begin followed by a number of statement and end and so on. The always block is the programming block which will be always executed in, during simulation. So it's an infinite loop kind of thing in simulation. An initial block will be evaluated only at the very beginning of simulation. So it is from the initial block where you start your test bench functionalities and then you will increment your functionalities to some other blocks. And in the same way, the final block is the block which is executed at the very end of the simulation. So when a dollar finish or dollar exit is called by the simulation, this final block will be evaluated. And at that time, if you wanted to print some state of your DUT or your test bench, you can print some debug messages and states, etc. And if, but if you wanted to add something which I, that is executing all the time, you need to add within an always block. Apart from always block, there are two more functions, uh, two more procedural blocks named task and function. So you can even write your um, functional code within a task and or within a function, and you can call these task or function anywhere in, within these three blocks, either in an always block or in an initial block or in a final block. When you write task or function, you don't need to use this begin and blocks because there is built in begin and blocks along with task and function. So for example, a task is started with a keyword task and followed by a task name and it is ended with the keyword end task. In the same way function is started with keyword function and ended with a keyword end function. Next, you will quickly go through the difference between blocking and non-blocking assignments. When you use an assignment statement in any of the procedural block that you have just learned about, there are two types of assignments categories um, uh, you can choose. One is a blocking assignment, other one is a non-blocking assignment. So blocking assignment is represented by using a simple equal to statement and a non-blocking assignment is written by using uh, a less than or equal to symbol. So this is a non-blocking assignment symbol. The main difference between these two assignment statement is in case of simulation, all the statements within an always block are executed sequentially when it is rep represented using always and when it is represented using a, a non-blocking assignment, all the uh, statements within an always block are executed in parallel every time the block is evaluated. To more clear, to explain it a little more, this is how the execution happens. So RHS of every, the first the first expression is evaluated, then it will be assigned to the uh, LHS and go to the next statement and do, do the same and so on. 
this is true in case of a blocking assignment so this is what we expect when you use an assignment statement it will be executed one by one sequentially and the changes are uh, happening to the variables immediately as well but when you use non-blocking assignments the changes will not happen immediately more precisely all the RHS expressions are evaluated using the values from the previous time slot and at the end of the current time slot the all those values will be assigned um, to the LHS simultaneously and thus in effect any change in the RHS will not be reflected immediately on the LHS rather it will be uh, it will be done in a parallel fashion so this is the difference between blocking and non-blocking assignment and there is a golden rule uh, when you select between these two you should never mix both blocking and non-blocking assignments in the same always block or in the same initial block or final block or task or function once you choose to write a statement as uh, by using a blocking assignment in a particular block they should always uh, use the same assignment type for all the statements in that block and here is one more example which is um, explaining the difference between blocking and unblocking assignments as we have seen the RH in case of a blocking assignment RHS of the first expression is evaluated assigned to LHS go to the next one and so on so let's look at an example here I'm using uh, an always block which is sensitive to a positive adjust clock and two assignment st statements are there like C is equal to A and B C, C is equal to B and B is equal to A and both of them are using the blocking assignment in as you might at, at some point in time or at some clock the values of b uh, a b and c are something like say a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 8 then in the next clock so when this is evaluated first c will be assigned with to assigned with the value of b immediately therefore c will be equal to 8 next b will be assigned with the value of a which is equal to 2 so b will be equal to 2 now let's again see uh, the same set of always block we are reversing the order so first b will b is assigned with a and then c is assigned with b so in this case uh, when as these these are using always uh, block with blocking assignments at some clock say these are the values of a and b and uh, immediately when the first assignment happened the value of b will be changed to 2 when, when the first expression is evaluated since it is changed to 2 to immediately uh, the value of c will be again equal to 2 because at this point the value of b has already changed now see the, look at the same example in case of non-blocking assignment so when a non-blocking assignment is used in these two examples the same examples so there is no difference in, in in the first case so because there is no order dependency here but look at the second example when uh, b is assigned with a and c is assigned with b since both of them are using non-blocking assignments here first at the, when this is evaluated all the right hand side expressions are evaluated first so there is nothing to evaluate here at this point because this is just a single variable this is not an expression so uh, when the evaluation start at a particular clock a will be equal to 2 and b will be equal to 8 and at the end of the current time slot the values will be uh, the evaluated values will be assigned to the uh, next value next set of uh, the left hand side therefore c will be equal to 8 because c will be assigned to b the value of b from the previous clock and b will be equal to 2 as b will be assigned with the value of a from the previous clock thus in case of a non-blocking uh, as non-blocking assignment the order of expression doesn't matter in whatever order you write the simulation result will be same this is not exactly true there are some conditions where the order matter in case of uh, non blocking assignments as well but in general the order doesn't matter but in case of blocking assignment the order of expression matters and you can assume some and you, uh, you can compare this to uh, the the conventional programming methods where the the changes will happen immediately